Namaste. So let's continue with Mahishasura Mardani Stotram, Shloka 13. Arivala Ganda Galan Mada Medura Matta Matanga Jaraja Pate Tribhuvana Bhushana Bhuta Kalanidi Rupa Payonidi Raja Sute Ayi Sudati Janalala Samanasa Mohana Manmata Raja Sute Jaya Jaya He Mahishasura Mardini Ramya Kapardini Shaila Sute Salutations to you, O Divine Mother. I invoke you, who is like a royal intoxicated elephant, from whose cheeks the thick mada intoxicant oozes out and falls incessantly in the form of arts, beauty, and power, who is the daughter of the king and from whom comes the treasures of arts, beauty, and power, which are ornaments of the three worlds, who is like the daughter of Manmata, Cupid, the god of love, who gives rise to desires and infatuation in the mind for women with beautiful smiles. Victory to you, victory to you. I take refuge in your auspicious feet, O destroyer of the demon Mahishasara, who shines with beautiful locks of hair, the daughter of the mountain. So this is wonderful, again. <laughs> that she is the origin of all beauty, wisdom, cleverness, power, the arts, everything that makes life worthwhile, everything that makes life beautiful. She is the author of that. She is the source of that. And then it comes down through her other shaktis, her subordinate shaktis, such as Lakshmi, the goddess of wealth, Saraswati, the goddess of learning, and many, many more. The Sri Vidya, if you study Sri Vidya, the Sri Yantra is a, a diagram of the cosmos, and the various angles and spaces in that diagram represent the subordinate shaktis that control every aspect of existence, everything from you know the beginning of the cosmos to the end of it. So she is life, but she's also death. She is rebirth and she is karma. She is beauty and she is also the terrible warfare that uh, deluded people use to try to gain power. Real power is bestowed by her directly. It's not taken. It's given. So try to understand. She is the source of everything good. And if we accept it from her, worship her and please her, she'll give us everything. Everything that we need to reach perfection. She won't give us things we don't need. She won't give us things we're not entitled to according to karma. She makes the laws of the universe and she also follows them. So devotional service and surrender to her is the ornament of all ornaments. Now, Shloka 14. Kamala Dala Malako Malakanti Kala Kalita Malabhala Late Sakala Vila Sakala Nilayakrama Keli Chalatkala Hangsakule Ali Kula Sankula Kuvalaya Mandala Mauli Milad Bakuladi Kule Jaya Jaya He Mahisha Sura Mardini Ramya Kapardini Shaila Sute Salutations to you, O Divine Mother. I invoke you on whose stainless shining forehead is artistically curved the tender beauty of a spotless shining lotus petal, 
whose movement resembles the playful, soft movements of a flock of swans, from which all schools of arts are manifested in succession, whose ornamented and braided hair combines the beauty and sweetness of the blue lotus crowded by a swarm of bees with the bakula flower infested with a swarm of bees. Victory to you, victory to you. I take refuge in your auspicious feet, O destroyer of the demon Mahishasura, who shines with beautiful locks of hair, the daughter of the mountains. So she is not only the origin of the arts, she is the patron of the arts. And from her, all inspiration is coming. And when we get inspired by her, we can do amazing things <laughs> we could never do on our own. And when the uh, Shastras here make alliterations and metaphors of bees, huh? the bees represent the devotees who come to the flower of the goddess, the beauty of the goddess, to take the nectar. Because the bees, they're their name is Mardana also, so it's a pun, that the bees take only a few grains of pollen from each flower. They take only a little bit of nectar from many, many different places. So although she is given so many arts, there are 64 arts mentioned in the scriptures, in the Devi uh, Bhagavatam, Srimad Devi Bhagavatam. But there are many, many more arts, of course. Those are just the basic ones. So she's not only giving all those arts and beauties to the world. The devotees are coming and they're taking those grains of pollen, those nectar from those flowers, and then using it to make wonderful devotional presentations back to her. Just like we offer the Ganges its own water, uh, or just like we offer the sun, a lamp, its own light. So in the same way we offer her our beauty and our arts and our presentations of devotion and love. And this is the appropriate worship for the goddess. Next. Kara Murali Rava Vijita Kujita Lajita Kokila Manjumate Milita Pulinda Mano Haragunjita Ranjita Shaila Nekunjagate Nijagana Bhuta Mahashabari Gana Sadguna Sambrita Kelita Le Jaya Jaya He Mahishasura Mardini Ramyaka Pardini Shaila Sute Salutations to you, O Divine Mother. I invoke you, who makes the sound of the flute seem wet and monotonous, and who puts the cuckoo to shame by the beauty of her voice, who hums heart-stealing songs along with the girls of the Pulinda tribe while walking in the groves of the mountains, brightly colored due to blooming flowers, who plays with the tribal women of her group who are filled with good virtues. Victory to you, victory to you. I take refuge in your auspicious feet, O destroyer of the demon Mahishasara, who shines with beautiful locks of hair, the daughter of the mountain. So she does not resemble a so-called civilized woman of the world today. Uh, this verse harks back to much earlier values, tribal values, and the tribal peoples of the world who are actually the original residents of the planet. And many other, especially demoniac people, have come from lower planets, and that's why this planet is such a mess right now. But the original inhabitants, the natives, the native peoples of this planet are all tribal peoples, and they have been all but wiped out by the demoniac forces coming from other planets by rebirth. See, the way to travel to different planets is not by spaceships or some kind of portal or some nonsense like that. 
It's by the process of rebirth. The yogis know how to direct their thoughts toward a specific planet and take birth on that planet in the next body. So those even demoniac people who have yogic powers have used or misused this type of yoga to take birth on the earth planet, even though they're not qualified for it. And they have created chaos here. So don't worry, mother is in control and she's in the process of kicking their asses. <laughs> Climate change and all that. So one more verse. Vijita Sahasra Karaika Sahasra Karaika Sahasra Karaika Nute Krita Sura Taraka Sangara Taraka Sangara Taraka Sunusute Surata Samadhi Samana Samadhi 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 Sujata Rate Jaya Jaya He Mahisha Sura Mardini Ramya Kapardini Shaila Sute Salutations to you, O Divine Mother. I invoke you, who conquers thousands of enemies who fight against her with thousands of hands by manifesting her own thousands of hands, who then makes thousands of hands of devotees praise her, who created the rescuer of the devas, Kartikeya, to fight with demon Taraksura and then urged her son for that great fight who is pleased with both the devotional contemplation, like King Surata, for worldly gains, and also the excellent devotional contemplation, like Merchant Samadhi, for spiritual realization. Victory to you, victory to you. I take refuge in your auspicious feet, O destroyer of the demon Mahishasura, who shines with beautiful locks of hair, the daughter of the mountain. So this verse is very interesting. <laughs> we already went over how she manifests forms with thousands of arms and hands to defeat her enemies and how she inspires thousands of devotees to worship her and do works of devotion with their hands. And we also, I think we mentioned some time back, the story of the king and the merchant who both took shelter in the ashram of a forest sage due to reverses in their lives. And how they both worshiped the mother until they attained samadhi. But the samadhi of the king was for worldly gain. He wanted his kingdom back. He wanted to defeat his enemies and regain his rightful position. So by worship of the goddess, that's exactly what he got. But then there was the merchant, whose name happened to also be Samadhi. <laughs> what a great name. And the merchant Samadhi attained Samadhi Samadhi, the Samadhi that is its own end. That means Nirvikalpa Samadhi. We just wrote a song about that called Black Moonlight. Because in Nirvikalpa Samadhi, there is no object, therefore there is no consciousness. There is only pure awareness. And this is the most ecstatic thing. This is the fruition of Ananya Bhakti. Ananya Bhakti means worship of the self with devotion and love. There is no second self. There is only one self. And that self is Brahma. Brahman is pure, unconditioned awareness, without any object, without any activity, without any qualities. So when in that samadhi, one apparently experiences nothing, but actually one experiences one's self, the only self there is. And this is the actual goal of all yoga practice. And this can be experienced by worship of the Divine Mother with the proper sankalpa, the proper desire for complete enlightenment. Aum Tatsa, Aum Shakti Aum.